Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video. This week I'm going to be making customized chocolates from my 3D scans on the Instar. I was visiting my family over the weekend and I got the pleasure to play with this beautiful bunny that looks like a cow uh, named Blossom and she's just the cutest thing ever. I felt so whole and happy playing with her. She's just so sweet and doesn't bite. So I thought I would just share a couple clips with you. I would have loved to scan her, but she just moves too much. And also with the flashing lights, I don't know how that would impact the bunny. But anyways, I got scanned today by my mom. I kind of had to walk her through it because it was her first time, but she caught on pretty quickly. Uh, it's fairly easy once you get the settings in check. So uh, here you can see that the green had sufficient data and for some reason it was having some issues capturing data on my nose. This was also a common theme that I saw with other scans from people and it just collected too much uh, data points and then also it wasn't capturing I guess like the nostrils and the hollowness of that. But once I put it through the mesh model settings it turned out okay it, it kind of compensated for that uh, but also i am very impressed overall by how this scanner captures hair there is hair mode but i've noticed with many other scanners that it does not pick it up especially if it's black hair so props to einstar for figuring that out i can honestly say that i have a lot of experience scanning people with this scanner because I've literally scanned my entire family and all my co-workers so I find that the technique with this is to start at the face and do the entire face right away because if you wait too long and you come back to it your facial expression tends to change over a minute it's really difficult to hold it you don't think it is until you're sitting there with your eyes closed trying to hold the smile so you do the face right away this is an example right here of my mom going over my face multiple times. It will look bumpy, it will look lumpy. You want to avoid that. Start at the face and then once that's done, you can move to the back of the head and the rest of the body. That's just my recommendation. I found that it worked well and if you're trying to scan people consistently and get a good result, I do recommend doing it that way. This is me importing it into my iPad app called Nomad. It's a sculpting app. It's amazing. If you're into sculpting, you should definitely check it out. I primarily got scanned with my eyes closed, so I thought I would add some eyes. It ended up looking pretty crazy, but I am happy with how it turned out overall. I didn't change any features, but I emphasized a lot of the main features like end lines and lips and stuff like that because I wanted to make sure that it came through during the thermal form. Here, I'm just prepping. I ran out of gloves, which is kind of a bummer. So I had to use like the gloves that came with the Elegoo Saturn, still had them. Thank you, Elegoo, for packing your printers with gloves. But this is how it turned out. It took about, I believe, nine hours to print. I put in a clip on how I sliced this model specifically for thermal forming in mind. So if you're interested, stay tuned for the end of the video. I printed these quite large because I didn't know how well the detail would come up in a smaller size, but now that I kind of have the procedure down pat and I'm looking in hindsight, I can definitely do this a lot smaller with a lot more quantity. So it can kind of resemble like Hershey's Kisses or like little candies or stuff like that. I used your basic Elegoo standard resin. I did have a bit of the AK resin left in the tank, so it did mix a bit, but I've, I've done this many times. It has no impact on the prints. They cure fine. Uh, the next step that I did was quite crucial in regards to vacuum forming. And since this print has a ton of detail, you have the depths of the nostrils, you have the eyes and the hair, you want to make sure that when you're thermal forming, for example, that you have little air vents or air holes so that the, the material gets sunken into that area and you see that detail. 
So one thing that I did was I took my drill and made some holes. The thing is, I didn't have any bits that were super tiny. I wanted to make the least bit of damage. So I used a snap maker CNC bit and it ended up breaking, which kind of sucks. But then afterwards, after a little bit of hunting in my toolbox, I found a smaller bit and it turned out perfectly fine. Here, I'm just setting up for thermal forming. Got a Put the sheet in between the two little tabs there, lift it up to the heater where the plastic starts to melt. You put your little timer for like a minute or two depending on the sheet you used. I used PETG which is food safe and I put my model down and that's it, vacuum formed. This one was actually considered my failure because you can see in the chin area that there is like a little indentation. It didn't kind of thermal form seamlessly. So I, I did another run and it turned out perfectly. When you thermal form, sometimes it's super difficult to get your model out of the sheet. And thankfully, since I had very large drain holes, I was able to take that out much, much easier than if I were not to have it. So definitely keep that in mind if you plan on thermal forming your 3D prints. This is round two, came out a lot better, and I think I waited a little bit too long to, to thermoform the first time around, so I wanted to move on to my second model, but once I put it down on the bed, I noticed that it wasn't leveled. There was a little bump at the back, and I'm pretty sure that's just from me sculpting, so after I noticed that, I just went back to my first one since the sheet was already heated up. I've had this thermoformer called the Meku Form Box for about a couple months now, and I can say it's probably my favorite thing to use after making my designs or printing out a scan or something like that because you can take a scan or a print and really make it into a real life object, whether it's a, you know, a candle or a chocolate or a soap like you can do so many different things and i think i'm gonna start like a little series little playlist on this channel where i just make soaps and candles and chocolates from my 3d prints and uh, i guess give them to people and see what they think so uh yeah i i really love this it's super fun and you can see the quality and the level of detail that does get transferred. So I was definitely happy and impressed. The eyes could have been a little bit better, but since I made the eyelashes super dramatic, you could see that come through. As you can see, I just kind of prepped my mold, I cut it up, and I was melting the chocolate in the meantime. So it takes a little bit of time. I use a double boiler to melt it. It is specifically for molding, which definitely helps. I tried with chocolate chips. It doesn't work really well, so I just kind of stick with this. But I am just demolding right now. I had a little bit of trouble until I cut the bottom portion of the mold a little bit. 
but once I did that I was able to remove it perfectly fine. I did crack this pink one a little bit but it wasn't too noticeable so I just kept going. <laughs> but this is the final result. I am uh, very <laughs> happy it is both funny and creepy at the same time and i hope that some of my friends want to join this experiment and have a chocolate version of themselves but overall this was super fun i'm happy i got to share it with you guys and again if you're interested in seeing how i slice this model for the thermal forming it's just coming up in a couple of minutes so stay tuned Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to, please like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know what you would like to see thermoformed next. I'm probably gonna be doing some buildings, I think, maybe CN Tower, the Statue of Liberty, something cool. And then, um, yeah, I'm open to any ideas that you guys may have, so please let me know.